and you navigate to the Exchange section, you'll see that there's a Microsoft Exchange Health Manager service. What you can do is stop it and set it to Disabled. The next one that you can do is the Diagnostics one, which again you can disable and stop. Now these things generate a lot, a lot of files. Some people want them on. Uh, if you have the capacity, you can you know, give the server more space, but generally they're going to just keep on growing and growing and growing. The next thing we're going to look at is the ETL files. Now I created, uh, well I already opened the, the folders. So one of the places that it actually writes quite a few large files is the performance logging. Now, as this is a test lab, obviously I don't have those kind of log files here, but if you navigate to Program Files, Microsoft Exchange Server, version 15 logging and diagnostics, there are two folders here, daily performance logs and performance logs to be processed. You should see one gig files and five gig files in here, which is one gig every day and five gigs once a week. As you can see, mine are empty. I don't have much running here or the server doesn't actually do much at this stage. Right, the next one is the ETL traces. This is in a different location. So if you go to again program files, Microsoft Exchange Server, version 15 bin, search series diagnostics and ETL traces, you normally have about 100 plus 50 meg files sitting there which you can safely delete. If we go back one folder and we go into logs, this is another place where a lot of log files write. Um, in large organizations, these files grow pretty big and there's a lot of them. Moving on to the IIS logs, if you navigate to uh, Windows or your C drive, I need pub logs, your log files, and then your W3 SVC1 these files will obviously grow each day and depending on again how big your organization is they can grow five six seven hundred megs which eat into the space of the server right the last option that you have is going into task scheduler and sorry um, expanding microsoft windows and scrolling down to pla and under pla you'll see where I was in performance logging earlier, where it creates the, um, the one gig files and the five gig files, you can actually right click and you can disable these from running. This obviously then won't generate the files in there. Now, many people ask, can I run this on a scheduled task? Yes, you can. Um, You can run it on a scheduled task. Now, if you go to uh, my blog or you go to the gallery, the Technic Gallery, you're able to download the PS1 file and you can run this file directly from the downloads folder. And again, if you want to schedule it, then you need to copy this file to the scripts folder under the under exchange or where exchange is stored so installed so if you install it on the d drive and obviously you'll go d drive program files microsoft exchange server version 15 and then you go to scripts and you paste it in here you confirm it and now it's in here because we're going to be running it from here as we go along so what I've done is I actually copied the arguments that I need to do because I can't remember that out of my head. So if we go create a task and we call it clear logs, you can run with the users uh, login or not. You can run with the highest privileges. And generally I set it to the OS if you're running Exchange 2016 on Server 2016, you can set it to 2016. In this case, I'm running Exchange 2019 on Server 2019. Then what you do, you can go to Triggers and you can set 
I want to run this daily, every day. Repeat a task if you need to every hour. I have it like this, especially in large organizations because of the amount of log files it generates. And if you want to keep your space in check, then do this. If you only want to run it once a day, um, it's your choice. If we go to actions and we choose a new action, this is where we basically start a program and we browse we can you can either browse to the powershell directory or you can just copy it off the website collaborationpro.com and you can find this cleaning out the log files so we're going to be calling powershell and then the arguments is we're running this it's sitting in a scripts folder now obviously um, I've got it as clear logs PS1, but I've actually renamed it. So if we go back, you can see yeah, access to my fixed. So if I go to downloads, it's obviously going to fail. Rename. And you can rename it in the directory or you can just delete it and copy it back. Version 15 scripts, continue. Click OK, and pretty much everything else is the same. And now you just uh, enter the password for the user that's going to be running it. And there you have your scheduled task. If you want to run the task on its own, you can launch PowerShell and you can navigate to that directory. And then we can basically start the script. Sorry about that. Helps if I'm in the right directory. Now, why is it not finding it? Downloads, cleaning logs, apologies for that. can say run once and as you can see it's going through and deleting a whole lot of files and you'll notice that while it's actually running if we look at the space on the C drive um, the bigger the organization you'll notice this will start going up more and more so you'll free up more space if you want to run it more frequently you can Otherwise, if you want to just run it on demand, you can as well. Um, some people are getting access to my error message, but as you can see, this is unmodified on the folder settings. No security permissions were changed, etc. Um, if you need any assistance with this, you can log, on, log into my blog and you can drop me a message and I'll gladly assist you further. Thank you.